Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janavala Ba Giri Varadhari Jai Gopi Janavala Ba Giri Varadhari Yashoda Nandana Bhajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Bhajajana Ranjana Yamana Tira Manachari Yamuna Tira Manachari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Mr. Pad Padamahansa Rudraka Church Astoto the Sri Srimad His Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Kijai Iskan BBT founded our church Srila Prabhupada Kijai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Pranamahansa Rudraka Church Astoto the Sri Srimad His Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Kijai Ananta Koti Vaishnavinda Kijai Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Kijai Srimad Bhagavad Gita Kijai Samaveda Bhaktivinda Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glory to Sri Guru and Goranga. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om 
on this 14th day of March, 2022, in San Diego. We're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita, as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We are in Chapter 2, entitled, Contents of the Gita Summarized, text 52 on page 119. On most of your books, anyway. Yada, Yada. Te, te Mohakalilam moha Buddhi Vyatitarishiti Tada, Tada Gantasi, Gantasi Nirvedam Shotavyasya Shutasicha Yada Te Mohakalilam Buddhi Vyatitarishiti Tada gantasi nirvedam. Tada gantasi shutasicha. Yadate mohakalilam. Buddhi vyati tarishyati. Tada gantasi nirvedam. Shotavyasya shutasicha. Yadate moha kalilam. Buddhi vatitarishyati. Tadagantasi nirvedam. Shotavyasya shutasicha. Yadate moha kalilam. Buddhi vatitarishyati. Tadagantasi nirvedam. Dimitri. Yadate mohakalilam. Buddhi vaditarishiti. Tadagantasi nirvedam. Shotavyasya shutasicha. Yadate mohakalilam. Buddhi vaditarishyati. Tadagantasi nirvedam. Shotavyasya shutasita. Ravi. Ravi. Yadate moha kalilam. Buddhi vaditarishyati. Tadagantasi nirvedam. Shotavyasya shutasita. Ladies. Yadate moha kalilam. Buddhi vati tarishyati. Tadagantasi nirvedam. Shotavyasya shutasyacha. Yadate moha kalilam. Buddhi vati tarishyati. Tadagantasi nirvedam. Shotavyasya Shutasicha Zoomland Yadate Moha Kalilam Yadate Moha Kalilam Buddhi Vati Tarishati Buddhi Vati Tarishati Tadagantasini Vedam Tadagantasini Vedam Shotavyasya Shutasicha Shotavyasya Shutasicha Yada, when, te, your, moha, of illusion, kalilam, dense forest, buddhi, transcendental service with intelligence. Vyotitarishiti surpasses, tada, at that time, ganta, asi, you shall go, nirvedam, callousness, shotavyasa, toward all that is to be heard, shutasya, all that is already heard, cha, also. Translation. Lord Krishna says to Arjun, when your intelligence has passed out of the dense forest of delusion, you shall become indifferent to all that has been heard and all that is to be heard. Purport. There are many good examples in the lives of the great devotees of the Lord, of those who became indifferent to the rituals of the Vedas simply by devotional service to the Lord. When a person factually understands Krishna and his relationship with Krishna, he naturally becomes completely indifferent to the rituals of food of activities, even though an experienced Brahman. Sri Madhavendra Puri, very appropriate, is a disappearance day, 
<laughs> Sri Madhavan Rupuri, a great devotee and achari in the line of the devotees, says, all right, I don't think we should try to chant this straight off. I'll just go through it myself. Sandhyavan hanabadda masta bhavato bo snana tubhyam namo bodeva pita dasya tarpa navado naham chamacham yatam yatvak vapina sadhya yadava kalotam sasya kang sadvisha smaram smadham agam harami tadalam manye kamanye name All my prayers three times a day, all glory to you. O bathing, I offer my obeisances unto you. O demigods, O forefathers, please excuse me for my inability to offer you my respects. Now, wherever I sit, I can remember the great descendant of the Yadu dynasty, Krishna, the enemy of Kangsa, and thereby I can free myself from all sinful bondage. I think this is sufficient for me. The Vedic rites and rituals are imperative for neophytes comprehending all kinds of prayer three times a day, taking a bath early in the morning, offering respects to the forefathers, etc. But when one is fully in Krishna consciousness as in, as, and is engaged in his transcendental loving service, one becomes indifferent to all these regulative principles because he has already attained perfection. If one can reach the platform of understanding by service to the Supreme Lord Krishna, he has no longer to execute different types of penances and sacrifices as recommended in revealed scriptures. And similarly, if one has not understood that the purpose of the Vedas is to reach Krishna and simply engages in the rituals, etc., then he is uselessly wasting time in such engagements. Persons in Krishna consciousness transcend the limit of Shabda Brahma, or the range of the Vedas and the Upanishads. Om Jnana Timurandasya Jnanandana Shalakaya Chakshu Unmiditam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master Srila Prabhupada opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So we can refer back to text 42 and 43 on page 110. Krishna is speaking to this verse. Yamimam, these verses. Yamimam pushpadam bhacham prabhadanti vipashita vedavada tatapata nanyanastiti bhanana. Men of small knowledge are very much attached to the flowery words of the Vedas, which recommend various food of activities for elevation to heavenly planets, result in good birth, power, and so forth. Being desirous of, the sen of sense gratification and opulent life, they say that there is nothing more than this. So this is a... Uh, a certain strategy on Krishna's part. Because if you recall, Arjuna, when in the first chapter, in part of the second chapter, he was making his argument why he sh shouldn't fight. He didn't just say, although he said, but he didn't just say, that I'm you know, so attached to my grandfather, Bhishma Dev, and my teacher, Dronacharya, and all these other friends and relatives on the other side, that I don't want to fight. He felt that that would not be, be acceptable. So he wanted to give an argument from the Vedas. And there is part of the Vedas where it, uh, it's, it's described very important, for instance, to perform the Shraddha ceremony for your pitris, for departed uh, forefathers, so that if they're suffering in some, uh, due to some karma, they can be relieved. And uh, the chastity of women is so important because otherwise you get varnasankara, you get a society filled with uh, rogues and rascals, and you create hell on every, for everyone. And that's also uh, very much recommended in the Vedic literature. So he was speaking from that, and he was giving some authority to what he really wanted to do was avoid, at, at all costs, killing his friends and relatives and those who he loved. So Krishna says in, this, in these two texts that uh, men of, first he says these are men of small knowledge, uh, very much attached to the flowery words of the Vedas. But this is a different class of people who don't even care about the Vedas and are just living like animals. So, so that's the point. But even these, he says, they, uh, which recommend uh, food of activities for elevation of heavenly planets, good birth, so forth. They say there's nothing more than this. But in the very next verse, he says that uh, this, this kind of uh, absorption, which is after all a category of boga and aishvarya. Boga means sense enjoyment and aishvarya means opulence. If you, if you perform severe austerities and nice sacrifices in this life, and then you go to the heavenly planets, Indra Loka, then you can enjoy like anything. You don't go there so you can com continue to perform austerities in Indra Loka. That's now, you, now you've reached the goal. Now you're going to enjoy. 
But as Krishna explains in the ninth chapter, when Tetam Punye Swarga Lokam Bishalam, Chine Punye Marja Lokam Bishanti. That when you're a punya, it's like money in the bank. You, you get all of these good credits materially. And then you, you're eligible to go. Not everyone gets them, it takes several births maybe, but you, they, you can go there. But then you're enjoying. You're enjoying like anything. Tetam Bukvas Swarga Vishala means vast enjoyments, much more than we can enjoy, we can imagine here. But then pun Tetam Bukvas Swarga Vishala Punne Chine, when a Chine, when it's run out, Marti Lokam Vishanti. You return to this world of birth and death. Evam trahi dharma manopapanna gadakatam karma karma. Trahi dharma means the, the Vedas that deal with these subject matters. Uh, you just go and come. You haven't made any progress going back to Godhead. You, you simply had a more refined experience of sense gratification. You're back to square one. And he doesn't mince any words. Martyalokam, this world of death. So here you are again. So therefore, Krishna says, those who were too attached... And this is all in the context of, develop, of trying to develop that vyavasayatmaka buddhi, that one-pointed, de- firm determination for devotional service, which has to be there because we're so conditioned. And unless we're determined, then our conditioning will, will take us away from the strict path. So vyavasayatmaka buddhi, a.k.a. kudanandana, this is not, that, at 44, Krishna says, in the minds of those who were too attached to sense enjoyment and material opulence, such as those who were following the karma kanda section of the Vedas that go to heaven, and who are thus bewildered by such things, the resolute determination for devotional service, vyavasayatmaka buddhi, to the Supreme Lord, does not take place. So how to develop that? Uh, Krishna then encourages Arjuna to, trans- to transcend the three Vedas, the Vedas deal mainly with the subject of the three modes of material nature. So there's a huge part of the Vedas that Srila Prabhupada didn't introduce us to. If you begin to read Prabhupada's books, you're already in, in that part of the Vedas that deal wholly and solely with transcendence, with the real goal of human life. The, 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 the thing about the, about the, the karma concept of the Vedas is that there are sacrifices and sometimes there's also some worship of Vishnu in there. In other words, you're still within the Vedic paradigm. And so eventually you'll see the futility of going and coming and going and coming, and you realize you want to get out of this world entirely, and therefore you'll study only the Bhakti Shastras, the the Vedanta Sutra, which is which is a Bhakti Shastra, although it's been misinterpreted. And if you if you don't understand that, read the the natural commentary. Who knows what the natural commentary is on the Srimad Bhagavatam? I mean on the Vedanta Sutra. (laughs) Srimad Bhagavatam. I kind of gave it away, I'm sorry getting ahead of myself. So, uh, and then in Srimad Bhagavatam, holy and solely. Krishna, devotees of Krishna, devotion to Krishna, it's all about bhakti, to take you to the ultimate goal. So, back to the verse of the day. So, Krishna uh, is, is telling us in text 54, uh, no, text 50, uh, was it 3 that we read? No. It's 52. Uh, that how to get beyond this. In, in other words, the intelligence, when an intelligence has passed out of the dense forest of delusion, you should become indifferent to all that has been heard and all that is to be heard. The idea is that when you get a taste for Krishna consciousness, just like, and does anyone in this room, that you're fight, are you fighting with, with a desire to go to the heavenly planets or merge into the Brahma Jodi? Wow, okay. Well, you have a little more chanting to do. <laughs> usually, I, usually I get a universal no there. Okay, we had about a, a, a 5%, yes. <laughs> But, I mean, you're fighting. You're sitting here in the class. Others who are not uh, fighting that desire, they're simply holy and soul. And they're not trying to go to the heavenly planet. They're just trying to enjoy the bar down the street. In other words, in this age, especially outside of India, you're not going to find people really following any Vedic injunctions. So, so for us, we've struck it rich, you know, because of Srila Prabhupada's sacrifice of coming all the way to America and you know, going through so many austerities to give us what we're reading tonight and give us the method to pursue the, the instructions in the Bhagavad Gita, the chanting of the holy name and the whole process of devotion. So, um, so this n- nice prayer from Madhavendra Puri. Now, <laughs> so he's personifying his, you know, all the, the, the rituals. Now, one of the things that he mentions is the snana. We should still bathe in the morning. 
don't think that we're so uh, advanced that you know I can do it. You know, it doesn't matter. I'm just <laughs> we follow the, the principles. But the idea is the ritual bath and the whole the whole business that he's talking about here. He's offering them respect, but he's saying goodbye. I'm not going to worry about you anymore because as long as uh, everything is 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 culminates in the attraction to Krishna and the, the, the details of how you're worshiping Krishna, which is both basically hearing and chanting, especially for someone like Madhavendra Puri. You can read his pastimes. I forget what chapter. You remember the chapter in the Madhya Leela? Where after Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, he then proceeded toward Vrindavan. He was in total ecstasy for three days with Nityananda. You know, they, they, he was going toward Vrindavan from uh, where he took sannyas, basically in Bengal. But uh, the devotees didn't have a ch- hadn't had a chance to say goodbye to him. His mother, you know, like, like that. So, uh, so Advaita and, uh, and Nityananda conspired to trick Lord Chaitanya and bring him back to Shantipur. <laughs> so he's going, he's in tra- you know, chanting, 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 not eating or drinking. And Nityananda was with him. So they come to the Ganges, and Nityananda said, oh, there's the Yamuna. And Lord Chaitanya said, oh, it must be the Yamuna. He chanted a beautiful verse and dipped into the Yamuna. But then he sees Advaita Chaya in a rowboat coming there. And he said, wait a minute, how did you get to Vrindavan? You know, because he, he had lost track of time. He thought maybe he's in Vrindavan. And Advaita said, please, get in the boat. You know, we need, we need to take you back to, to Shantipur. All the devotees are waiting to say goodbye. He gave him a new set of clothes. And, and uh, in this way, they brought Lord Chaitanya back. And then, uh, so, so, so he stayed there for, I think, about a week. And it was festival every night. His, his mother was able to cook for him every, every uh, night, you know, every day. She, she, she begged this charity from the devotees. As long as, long as Lord Chaitanya is here, let me be the only one to cook for him. He says, of course, Shachi, whatever you want, you know, of course. Anyway, so he, she asked him to stay, make a base, his base, Jagannath Puri. What we know is Jagannath Puri, or Sri Chaitra, where Lord Jagannath is there, and they have the big festival. And he agreed, because it's not that far from, from uh, Mayapur. And she would get news, from, news of him. He wouldn't be off in Vrindavan, which is much farther or whatever. So he went there, and, and on the way, uh, two, st- uh, two stories were told. One was about Chirachora Gopinath, the other about Sakshi Gopal, if I, if I recall. And, and I forget, was it Lord Chaitanya who told the one about uh, Madhavendra Puri? And Nityananda about Shakshi Gopal. I think they. Anyway, so that story was there, and we learn about Madhavendra Puri there. And uh, so I'm not going to go into the details, but it's, it, first of all, he, he had come earlier to Shantipur himself, and he had initiated Advaita Acharya. And, he, and uh, I think he also initiated Nityananda. And uh, so, so they, what, what, the reason why so, Madhavendra Puri is so important is because uh, he was a disciple in the Madhvacharya line, Madhva Sampradaya, which up until that point was not worshipping Radha Krishna as we know, as we know it. They were a bona fide line, and they were coming down from Lord Brahma, and uh, uh, it was all Lakshmi Narayan, very, you know, uh, highly respectful and uh, Dasya Ras. So Madhavendra Puri was in a different mood. He was in the Radha Krishna worship mood. And he introduced that into the Madhva line. And uh, he was very influential, as I mentioned with, with uh, Advaita Acharya and with Nityananda. There's a beautiful passage in the Chaitanya Bhagavad of their meeting. And so uh, it, it goes on like that. And uh, what happened was that uh, he went to Vrindavan, and he had a dream. And the, the dream was that, uh, that Gopal came to him and said, my deity, I'm, 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 I've been buried in this forest near where you're sitting. Because the Patans came, the Muslims came and, and invaded, and so the, the Pujaris wanted to save me, so they buried me in the, in the uh, ground. This happens sometimes. So now I've, I've been very hot here, and you, you should come and dig me out and, and, and put me in a temple. So Madhavendra really woke up and he, he realized it was very important. Krishna had come to him in a dream and he mobilized some of the men there in Vrindavan. They went into the forest and sure enough, there was the, uh, the deity buried just where he said he was. And so they've carefully excavated him, took him up on the hill, Govardhan Hill, and they arranged a, tem- a temporary temple and they, they had all the villagers come and bring all this food stuff and they had an Anakuta, which literally means a mountain of food. And that's, this is part of Govardhan Puja. 
you know, the, the Govardhan Puja that we do. That's why we have a little mountain here and it's sweets, you know, to symbolize it. So, uh, it, was, it, it describes that in great detail. Day after day, all of the nearby villages would bring all the food they had and it went on and on and on like that. And he, some Brahmins came up and from, being, uh, from uh, some, uh, some place, I forget where. And so he uh, saw they were very pure, he initiated them, they became the Pujari. So this is going on. So then, then uh, he, he has another dream. And Gopal says, I'm still not cool down, you know. It's, I'm still very hot. It was summertime. So I want you to go to uh, Jagannath Puri and get sandalwood. Sandalwood is very valuable. It's hard to get quantities outside of Jagannath. So Madhavanda Puri said, okay, off I go. So, you know, walking and walking. And there were all kinds of tax collectors and things, dangers, you know. But he took a few devotees with him and he went all the way down. And on the, uh, on the way... Um, he went, he saw Gopinath, he came to Gopinath temple. Uh, and he, they were famous for uh, the sweet rice, not actually the kheer that they offered. <laughs> Twelve pots of kheer a day, and the recipe was very wonderful, and he tasted it, oh, it was great. No, no so he, he, didn't, he didn't taste it, he said, I, if I only I could taste it, it hadn't been offered yet. Then I could know what's in, in it, and I could make the same for my Gopal in Vindavan. So... Uh, he felt, he said, oh, God, I made a great offense. I wanted to taste the, the boga before it has been made, offered to the deity. So he started fasting. He went out into the marketplace. He just was chanting Hare Krishna. So uh, the Bajari went and, and, and they offered the sweet rice. And he, uh, he had a dream. The Bajari had a dream. And in the dream, the Gopinath came to the Bajari and said, I've stolen a pot of sweet rice. That's why he became known as Chira Chora Gopinath. <laughs> Chira Chora means the... The thief of the kir, his own, his own, his own kir he stole, you know. So, uh, <laughs> and I put, I put a pot behind my, my cloth here. You, you hadn't seen it, you know. So sure enough, the Bajari took a shower and said, shower, took a bath. And uh, it says that in the, in the uh, book. It says he was, thought it was a good idea, he should take a bath. So he took a bath, went on the altar, and sure enough, there was this pot of sweet rice. You know, stolen by Krishna himself. Or the Lord reserved for Madhavendra Puri because he knew that he wanted to taste it. So uh, Pujari duly went out into the marketplaces. Will, will the devotee named Madhavan Rapuri please come? Uh, uh, Gopinath has, has stolen a pot of sweet rice for you. I said, wow. So Madhavan Rapuri came out. He said, this is an ecstasy. And there it was. And he tasted some of the sweet rice. He was very ecstatic. Finally drank it all. And then he broke the pot into little pieces. And each day after that, he would take a little piece and he would go into ecstasy. So uh, that was one of the, the, the past times there. And then uh, when uh, getting this um, sandalwood, he got to, to Puri and was able to make 80 pounds. We figured it out, like 80 pounds of sandalwood. He had someone help him, help him carry it, but he was carrying some. And he gets back to uh, Ramuna, where Gopinath was. And uh, Gopal appears to him in a dream. He has many dreams. And he says, you don't have to carry that all the way back to Vrindavan. I am Gopinath the one. And you just simply uh, have that, it's hot, the heat, the top of the summer, the most hot days of the summer. And so uh, he, he instructed him, you just have the pajaris each day, smear my body with some of the sandalwood, cool my body in that way, and then I'll also be benefited because we're one. All the same. So he was ready to carry it, but he got the order from Gopal to give it to, so you can imagine those pajaris. Sandalwood is very rare. That's why it was under restriction. <laughs> so they had all the sandalwood now, 80 pounds of sandalwood. So every day they're very happily smearing Gopinath. Uh, so anyway, this is Madhavendra Puri. And what's really significant is mentioned uh, at the end of his uh, manifest existence, Madhavendra Puri was bedridden. And he had his main servant there. And who his main servant was? Lord Chaitanya's spiritual master. Ishwar Puri. Ishwar Puri. <laughs> Ishra Puri was his servant. He was taking care, you know, performing menial services. And Madhavendra Puri was chanting this verse that he'd composed. And when I, I remember when I was working on this part of the, of the uh, Majalila, and I was reading up to it, and, and, and Krishna's coverage is, is, is glorifying this verse. He says, this verse is the best of Kavya poetry. It is, it is, uh, it, the more that you rub sandalwood, the more fragrant it becomes. And... Uh, Similarly, the more that you chant this verse, uh, the more you appreciate it. You can enter into the mood of you know, conjugal rasa or whatever. 
So being, you know, foolish new bhakta, basically, when, when, this was like 1975, I'd been in the movement two years. So I immediately memorized the verse, and I just kept, kept chanting it, chanting it. But it was a <laughs> very ecstatic verse. So here's the verse, the great verse of Madhavendra Puri. You can all work on it. Aidi nadayadanata he mutadanata kadava loka se vidyam tadaloka katadam dhyata brahmati kingaro miham. So, ai is, a, is a, a, a word meaning a supplication. Oh, my Lord, you know, I'm, I'm very... Dina. Dina means poor and wretched. So, who's speaking this verse? Srimati Radharani herself. And she's in, she's in Vrindavan, Krishna's in Mathura. Ai dina dayardra nata. Dayardra means your... Uh, dina dayardra means your heart is melting with compassion for the most wretched and poor. Poor means poor in, in their bhakti, poor in their mentality, you know. Dina dayardhanata, oh my master. So this is, my dina dayardhanata, maturanata. So that tells us he's in Mathura now. And she's back in Vrindavan. She doesn't go anywhere but Vrindavan. Kadava loka say, when will I see you again? Vidyam uh, loka katanam, because of, of my not seeing you, my heart is breaking. Vidyam, my heart. Vidyam loka, not seeing you, katanam, breaking. Vidyam uh, loka katanam, dayata brahmati king karomiham. Oh, my beloved, my darling, dayata brahmati king karomiham. I am confused, I'm, uh, my mind is wandering here and there. What shall I do now? It's a very simple prayer, but very profound. And this is what he was hearing and chanting uh, when he departed. So here in this, this purport, there's a nice verse, other verse he composed. And he's basically saying that in my present state, I am not going to follow any of these strict rituals of uh, Vedic life. All I need to do is smadam smadam, is to remember, remember again and again, agam harami, uh, he who, kamsa dvisha, the enemy of kamsa, the uh, crown of the whole Yadava dynasty, Krishna, who takes away all sin, I think this is all I need to do. And he, this is all any of us need to do. But to get there, we have to take a bath every morning and follow some other rituals and become strict. Okay, so uh, just to... So the idea is that... is that when you, when you advance in devotional service, you become indifferent to everything else is that you see this is the real, the real most important thing for me to do. And yes, I have to keep body and soul together, but everything else becomes minimized and in the background. Whatever you need to do, if you're a family person, you need to take care of it. But the, but the priority is to uh, deepen your realization of your eternal relationship with Krishna. And, and so Krishna is speaking to that, and this is what he wants Arjun to do. His real, his real relationship is with Krishna, and Krishna wants him to fight. Not with these friends and with these relatives and with his teacher and with Bhishma Dev. That's secondary. And the fact of the matter is that if he fights, then he'll be doing the best thing for all of them as well. Bhishma Dev, you know, uh, is famous for lying on the bed of arrows. He had this benediction from his father that he didn't have to leave his body unless he wanted to. So he shot through with all these arrows at the end there, but he's not leaving his body. Why? He's waiting for Krishna to come. <laughs> And Krishna came. He stood right by, by him so he could see him at the end. And then after he had spent days instructing Yudhishthir and, and encouraging Yudhishthir, Yudhishthir was such a soft, soft, soft-hearted Vaishnav that he was devastated by all the death and destruction that had happened. He now won the battle. But uh, there was thousands and millions of dead uh, soldiers and the animals and the bloodbath. He was disconsolate. So, he, uh, so Bhishma Dev encouraged him and said, no, now it's your duty, and here's how you can perform, and gave him all kinds of instructions. And then the auspicious hour for him leaving came. He could see the sun setting. And so he offered these prayers, and I, I know two of them, so uh, <laughs> very beautiful prayers. Here he is, li- just visually lying on his bed of arrows, meaning he's shot through with all these arrows. And then he's, ordered, or he's seeing Krishna directly in front of him. He was thirsty, you know, because he was... And so Arjun had shot an arrow into the ground and the Ganges water was coming so he could, this is all this mystic power that they had, so he could drink. And then he ch- chants his verse and he's looking at Krishna. And Tribhavana Kamanam Tamala Banam Tapakata Gauda Varambaram Tadane Vapadalaka Kulavatana Damjam Vijayasuke Ratadastumena Vadya. 
So he's describing Tribhavana Kamanang, the most attractive within all three worlds. Tamala Varnam, the complexion of a tamal tree, a little darkish. We had a tamal tree in the courtyard of Vrindavan, the temple. And it was, this is very rare. You don't see these tamal trees, you know. And that, that tree was there for many years. Eventually, it passed away. Tamal Avan, Ravikata Gaur of Arambadang Dadani Vapar. On his body, he's wearing these beautiful silken garments that have the, the, the uh, effulgence of uh, the sun. Ravikata, uh, you know, Ravikata Gaur, <laughs> the, the uh, rays of the sun. Ravikata Gaur of Arambadang Dadani Vapar. He has this beautiful lotus face with the curly, you know, framed by the curly blackish hair. He's meditating on Krishna, he's seeing him. Vijayasake. Vijayasake means the friend of the victor. Every time we have this Vijay, we have Vijay Prabhu and Vijay Krishna. Vijay means Arjun, the victor. That's the, that's the name for it. But he's Krishna is the friend of Arjuna. Vijaya Sake, Rajarastume Navajya, let my attraction, my love be drawn only to him and not be directed to anyone else. This is a prayer, yes, several of uh, the prayers. And then believe it or not, he remembers the gopis and dancing with Krishna. Gopavadva. Gopavadva means the wives of the gopas. So they, you know, men gopis. And he says, uh, uh, so Krishna in the Rasa dance, he's laughing with them and they're performing all the, uh, you know, the Lalika D means very attractive movements, very graceful dancing. Uh, and Volgohasa, laughter. Uh, and they, they're looking at each other with great love and undergoing transformations. And then Krishna disappears and the gopis are enacting his pastimes. He's remembering that also. And then again he asks, uh, may my attraction be drawn to him. So this is uh, Bhishma's prayers. Anyway, uh, I thought I'd give a little bit of explanation for Madhavendra Puri since it's disappearance day. Any questions on this? Uh, ah, and you have the mic. Uh, Prabhu, uh, like how do we know that the, which stage uh, in the devotional service we know that the intelligence has passed out of the dense of forest of uh, uh, delusion? <laughs> Uh, well, it, uh, when they're, they're not uh, bewildered by boga and aishwarya. A lot, a lot of it you can just tell how detached or even repelled by things that you used to be attached to that, you, that really kept you in the modes of nature. The vairagya is a good uh, measure. And you know, it's interesting that in um, the Upadesha Amrita, which is the essence of all advice, 11 verses, essential verses, the very first verse really is about the guru. How, you know, you have to, you have to choose uh, a preceptor. So he gives, that's what this verse is about. Vacho vegam manasakrodha vegam jivva vegam mararopasta vegam etan vegam yovishaheta dhira sarvam apimam pritavim sa shishyat. The shishyat, someone can accept disciples if he has complete control over these urgings, these pushings. And some are subtle, some are gross. So the urge to talk Huge urge. I was in the laundromat uh, on Saturday night. And there was a lady there who could not stop talking. She, she first engaged the, 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 la- the lady who works there, who was always folding stuff, you know. And she was giving her, I, I, I forget what it was about, something about her job and this and all that. And then, the other, then she had to do some other work. So she found another customer and they were going at it. And it was like, <laughs> the urge to talk is huge, you know. So that's one, Vacho Vega, I mean, you're probably familiar with that. Manasa, the mind, is so powerful. In the sixth chapter, it describes how the mind is the greatest friend and the worst enemy. When the, un- the uncontrolled mind, which is saturated with the modes of nature, is our worst enemy. It's impelling us and mo- telling us to go here, do this, draw this, enjoy this. I hate that. I hate you. You know, whatever. It's like, it's all coming from the mind, you know? <laughs> Keeping us deep in the modes of nature. So the mind is giving us so many impel- urges. Oh, the vega means urges. Vacho vega, manasakroda vega. And anger. And when the uh, desires are frustrated, you become angry. If you can't express your anger, you turn it in when you become depressed. All of this is coming from the mind. So vacho vega, manasakroda vega, jivha vega. Now you, that, then the gross sense, you know, the tongue. So powerful. 
your body, the belly is already filled up, but the tongue wants to taste more, and you eat more and more, and it says, oh my God. I often, you know, <laughs> describe my, I don't know how many years it was, in the, in the uh, Brahmacharya Ashram in Brooklyn. But they had some incredible cooks. I mean, there was just, <laughs> it, was, it was impossible. So, so every Sunday, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I was, I was pretty controlled. But Sunday came along, my God. We had this house, and they were cooking all day. In the ba- you know, in the kitchen, and it was all was wafting through all the rooms of the temple. You know, by the time the feast came along, because I would serve out the feast. You know, but then there were two things I couldn't resist, at least two, but halva and ladus. <laughs> and we had all these guests. They would come. They would pick it. You know, they wouldn't finish the plate. You know, so there would be a lot of halva, and especially a lot of ladus left over. And I would pile them all up and eat them all up. And then I would barely make it up to my bunk and lie back. And I would, I would say, never again, never again. And that lasted about a week until next Sunday. So it was going on like that. And it was, it was uh, luckily we had three hours of Harinam every day on the street, so I was burning it off. <laughs> anyway, it's a, it's a battle with the tongue. And uh, the prophet says, you eat too much, it puts it on the belly, vacha vegam, manasang, jiva vegam, urura, pasta vegam. And then the, the sex organs get agitated and all that business. So uh, then, so what's the verse about? That's the first couple of lines. But someone who has complete control of it, which you can actually see. In other words, if someone is self-controlled, you, you see, over time, this person really is uh, renounced. You know, they're, they're, anyway, you can pretty well tell. So if someone really has control over them, then he can make disciples. So that's the, the idea, is that uh, you, you know you're making progress when you feel more and more distaste for maya and more and more attraction to Krishna. Those two things, goes, they, they, they go together. And that's why it's so important to be strict in the sadhana because even if you don't, you, you're not, you, know, you say, well, again, you know, 3.30, 4 in the morning, oh God, I had a late night. But if you actually force yourself to you get into the habit of going, and you see, then you, and you see the beautiful curtains open, you know, the beautiful deities have the curtains open, and uh, you're chanting Hare Krishna, you say, oh, it's all worth it, you know? And the more that you develop that attraction, you, you, the more you develop the uh, n- indifference, vairagya, for the lower things. That's the, that's the answer. All right, let's go on. We have to do at least one more. Text 53. Shruti vipati pannate yadasta sati nishchala Samadhavatala buddhis Tada yoga mavapsisi When your mind is no longer disturbed by the flowery language of the Vedas and when it remains fixed in the trance of self-realization then you will have attained the divine consciousness. Purport, to say that one is in samadhi is to say that one has fully realized Krishna consciousness. That is, one in full samadhi has realized Brahman Paramatma, and Bhagavan. The highest perfection of self-realization is to understand that one is eternally the servitor of Krishna and that one's only business is to discharge one's duties in Krishna consciousness. I'm going to read that again. The highest perfection of self-realization is to understand that one is eternally the servitor of Krishna and that one's only business is to discharge one's duties in Krishna consciousness. A Krishna conscious person or unflinching devotee of the Lord should not be disturbed by the flowery language of the Vedas, nor be engaged in fruit of activities for promotion to the heavenly kingdom. In Krishna consciousness, one comes directly into communion with Krishna, and thus all directions from Krishna may be understood in that transcendental state. One, who is, sure, one is sure to re- achieve results by such activities and attain conclusive knowledge. One has only to carry out the orders of Krishna or his representative the spiritual master. So now he's talking about samadhi, and and he's this is the summary of the whole uh, book. So uh, he's dealing with everything. So shuddhi vipadi punnade without being influenced by the fruit of results, stasad uh, inishchala means without deviation. In other words, one is very. This is vivasayat makabudhi. This is what he's the state. Samadha achalabudhi. Your intelligence is unflinching. You're not, uh, you know, we would, we, recently we were talking about this process of, uh, well, how do you fall from the spiritual world? I think that came up, something. 
And actually, I was thinking, you know, it's, it's you, you willfully forget. You willfully uh, turn away from Krishna. You want to forget so that you can try to be Krishna or at least imitate Krishna, to enjoy, become the owner and the controller and, uh, and the enjoyer of the material energy. So uh, there's an unlimited variety of, of experiences you can have. And there is unlimited sound vibrations that will encourage you in that, written or spoken by those who are deeply involved in that and who are convinced this is the goal of life. So this is, this is the idea, is that your mind can be turned, your intelligence can be turned, especially since we're so used to it over many millions of births in this world. So it's not easy to change that. But when, you, when you're able to do that, when you're, uh, you're, you're not being influenced by the fruit of results described in the Vedic revelation, what to speak of you know, where, where we live, is, forget about the Vedic re- revelation, it's just the, the temptations and the allurements that surround us at every moment. So, uh, nishchala, you're not deviating, you're not shaken. And he emphasizes in the next line, samadha atala buddhis, the intelligence is fixed in samadhi, then you'll be in yoga. Meaning you'll be connected to Krishna. You you, you never uh, break that connection. You know. So then Arjun wants to know what he want. We won't read this tonight, but tomorrow night. That he'll uh, he wants. Well, how does how does such a person act? What does he say? What does he? How does he sit? All these things. The description. And so these next the verses fifty five, fifty six, fifty seven, like that. They're describing the highest level. The 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 devotees on the highest level of bhakti. He describes in a few verses. So Prabhupada says, uh, to fully realize, the, uh, to say one is the mind, to say that one has fully realized Krishna consciousness, uh, realized Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan, and he, he, one, he, one is uh, in self, highest perfection of self-realization is to understand that one is eternally the servitor of Krishna. So this is, this is Lord Chaitanya's teachings. We're coming up on Gaurapranima now, and what is Prabhupada's pranam mantra, which he wrote, Namahum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Padaya Bhutare Shimati Bhakti Padanda Swami Namani Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Pasta Deshatari. Prabhupada is simply sp- spreading the words of uh, Lord Chaitanya. This word Pacharine happens to be something like preach, so he used it as preaching. <laughs> he translated that. He's preaching the, the same message that Lord Chaitanya gave. And Lord Chaitanya's message really begins with. His first instruction to Sanatana Goswami, which is recounted very in great detail in Madhya Leela chapter 20, 21, 22, like that. Who, who am I? So the Sanatana wanted to know. It all begins with that. If you're not acting on your real identity, but on your false identity, which is what a hunkar means, then you're not getting anywhere. You're, 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 you're uh, tightening your involvement, your bondage to this material world. So what does he say? Jivera Sorupoi, what is that Sorup of the Jiva? Krishna Nityadas. So that one line, the second line, which we'll also mention in a minute, uh, if, you, if you actually accept that and you try to live on that, that's what it means to be a devotee, a, a, a sadhana bhakta, uh, or bhakti, Hare Krishna. <laughs> and that is that uh, you're practicing with all your facilities, your, your mind, your body, your senses, whatever wealth you have, art, what is it? Prana, arta, dia, vacha. Your life energy, your wealth, your words, and your intelligence. Uh, to live in that mood. How do you do that? Well, that you have to take instruction. You need a, a preceptor. That's the, the, the essential nature of the, of the guru. And he's teaching you. And it's, it's, you know, it's far out. In other words, it's not, it's not something that's going to come naturally from just living in this material world. You know, it, it, there's all kinds of things, different ways of eating, different ways of living, of sleeping, everything. So that, therefore we need training to, to actually discharge the duties in Krishna consciousness. But when one is uh, determined to do that and is actually discharging those duties, which begin so many do's and don'ts, you're following, then uh, you, can be, you can be said to be in samadhi if you're fully doing that. Uh, that one fully realized, and a Krishna conscious devotee, unflinching devotee, should not be disturbed by the flowery language of the Vedas. Uh, the highest perfection of self realization is to understand that one is eternally servant of Krishna and that one's only business is to discharge one's duties in Krishna consciousness. Well, that's a high bar, you know, that to, to uh, clear out all of the, the brush and all of the little things, you know, the things that are taking you away from Krishna. But it's, uh, it's worth the battle. 
It's really what's, what this human life is meant to striving for. Recently I was reading one purport and Prabhupada quoted this verse that I often quote, but I haven't quoted it in a while, so I'll give it again. Labdva sudurlam avidam bahusambhavante manushyam artatam anityam apiya dhira turnam yatetana patetanam ritya yavad nikshe yasaya vishaya kolasarva taksyat. So this word dhira comes up right at the beginning here. You remember that? Dehi no sminyata dehi, text 2, 2013 and 15 also. Uh, so he says there, you, you have attained this, having attained this human form of life, after many, many births in lower species, and you come up now, now we've hit the jackpot, we're human beings. Very difficult to attain, rare. manushim artadam. This manushim, human form, is artadam. It can give you the final goal of, of, of life in this world. Unlike the other cats and dogs can't understand. But, uh, but like all others, it's a nityam. It's not t- eternal. Time is passing, and, and we need to use every moment for this. Apiya dira. One has to be dira. One has to be thoughtful and self-controlled. And in that understanding, turnam yateta, without wasting time. Turna means immediately. What is that? Chaktva turna mishesha mandalapati. The Goswamis, they didn't. As soon as they met Lord Chaitanya, they didn't like, should I or shouldn't I? Should I or shouldn't I? <laughs> Immediately, they, they said, we quit, you know, to the king. It wasn't so easy to get out of that service. Uh, so, the same word is used, turnam, immediately. Uh, turnam yateta, strive, to strive. Turnam yateta, napateta, anumriti. As long as you have a body, as long as it hasn't died, because anumritu, death is following you at every moment. We don't know how, how long we have, really. So he says, immediately strive as hard as you can. Anumitya Yavat, Nikshe Asaya. For what? For the ultimate good. What is that ultimate good? Go back home, back to God. In Prabhupada's famous phrase, you know what that means. Vishaya Kalasarva Taksa. Then there's a sobering note at the end of the verse. It says, After all, you have enjoyed all these different varieties of sense gratification and all these other forms. You've already been there, done that, and what has it gotten you? Another birth, another death. And here you are in the hard struggle for existence. Didn't help. You know, all it did was prolong the agony, prolong your imprisonment. So strive for the ultimate good by practicing sadhana bhakti and uh, your life will be auspicious. That's the, that's the ultimate goal. And it's all the same thing is spoken of here in the Bhagavad Gita. Okay, so one final little poem. Okay, here's one I learned from Mahavishnu Swami, the elder. He used to be very, come here all the time. I don't think anyone's, do you, do you remember him? He spent some time in L.A. Yes, yeah, very wonderful devotee. So we had some nice talks. So he's, it, uh, I was in Vrindavan with, with him in the early 90s, and he was still a brahmachari, and so was I. We were online waiting for prasadam. And I said, as I, as I would do for almost anyone I met, like that, any brahmachari, you know, I said, would you like to hear a nice shloka? And so uh, he said, yeah, and he pulled out a pad, which no one else ever did, and he wanted to take notes. <laughs> I forget what verse I gave him, something from Karnamaj, I think. And then he gave me this verse, which I'll share with you, which I put into a poem. Dehishti mangsururi dehi bimatam chajasra, jaya sutari chasadama matam damuncha, pushyani samcha gadidam chanapanga tishtam, vairagya raga rasikoba vabhakti nishtam. Don't love the body, just a bag of flesh and blood and bone. Give up your sense of ownership for all you think you own. At every moment, see that your world totters on destruction. Become detached and learn to love the Lord without obstruction. <laughs> and I didn't do justice to that last line. Vairagya raga. So become attached to detachment. You know, it's very interesting. <laughs> become attached to vairagya <laughs> and become a rasika. Then you can begin to taste the nectar of Krishna consciousness. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Rama.